Hi folks, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm just a professor trying to offer you context in the war in Ukraine so you can understand what's going on. Four days ago I put out this video. It was trolling the trolls. Do you need a laugh? This is freaking funny and it might be brilliant. This was about a guy who spends his time going to Russian propaganda sites and actually trolling trolls. But he doesn't argue with them directly. He kind of pretends to be like one of them and then he kind of wigs out. In, in like almost like Piglet from Winnie the Pooh, just like, ah, oh, what's going on? <laughs> and so he, he and I have interacted for some time now, and it's he's actually given me a lot of really useful insight. And what I was putting on here was showing you, here's how the Russians actually think. But this video, like, it took on a life of its own. It got a lot of attention real quick. And here were some of the comments. Before I show you the comment comments below, let me show you a little bit of what I read from him because he he fed me some information and then I read it to the audience. And I'm go in this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tell you how he does it because he provided me that information because you asked for that. So here's a little bit of him talking to his trolls. He would say things like this. And now I get to say, see, I knew this would happen. I said a month ago, but would you believe me? Oh, no. You knew better, didn't you? Now look where we are. I knew this would happen. I knew it. <laughs> It's a fascinating way of trolling that side. This allows me to introduce a new level of toxic cynicism that they cannot push back against. As you pointed out, now, now he does that, be, or that happens that they can't push back because he's identified himself as one of them, and then he's fed into this. And now some people would say things like, oh, you shouldn't have revealed him. He's going to be found out. No, no, no. I don't think that's what's going on. And he changes his personas periodically. But okay, some of your comments were, this dude is fantastic. We need some kind of medal for his work. Or brilliant. I have some acquaintances doing very similar things. Thank you, Professor, for bringing us a story. I thought from day one uh, of this war that if I didn't have the language barrier, I'd be doing this also hats off to this person. He is doing this mostly in English, so you could do that kind of thing too. Uh, I'm not advocating or saying, yes, go do this. I am interested in this for the perspective that I can get about how Russians do what they do or see or what the average Russian's thinking or that kind of thing. But I'm going to tell you what he says he does, and then you can decide what you're wanting to do from there. I think this is the very best report that you've aired. This fellow is a genius. Thanks for sharing. Oh, please interview this gentleman on the split screen. I don't think he wants to have his identity revealed, but nevertheless, maybe we'll come to that sometime. Uh, this was a hard act to pull off, but it's imaginative and brilliant. Thank you for sharing this. I think your guy's amazing. Brilliant video, post mate, uh, very uplifting indeed. It's so easy to become tired and oppressed and confused and disoriented by propaganda. Last one, even if this video wouldn't get more people to actually do counter trolling, just this video being now up will end up in the ears and the eyes of the trolls. And believe me, I have my share of trolls. So trolls, if you're listening, if you're watching this, here's how he does it. I'm going to reveal to everyone in my audience, including you, here's how it does it. And then every time one of their colleagues will express frustration, they'll start to suspect the colleagues to be an undercover troll. Okay, well, I think, you know, that there's probably something pretty right about that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at what he said. And I, I put it into a Word document so I could make sure that I masked so that you're not seeing his name anywhere. Uh, and he said this, Dear Professor Gertis, the best way to develop an avatar. So the first thing you do is develop a, a new identity on whatever platform, Telegram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. Okay, the best way to develop an avatar is to go with a general conversation in the group and build your backstory to match what's happening in the group. Regarding my previous avatar, he was an economist because the conversation had taken on economic topics. My current avatar is extremely religious, to the point where he only trusts the Russian Orthodox Church, and basically everyone else is a devil worshiper. Now, that's a very smart move. And, and the reason that that's smart is because, like, like okay, it, uh, if we're talking the same language it's hard to push back against it, but if you're if you're just at odds, like that's not true. No, you're wrong. Like it goes in one ear and out the other. Your avatar can develop as needed, 
You don't need any complex backstory, and in fact, you don't need any backstory at all unless you go for the juggler, like moaning about the Black Sea Fleet. If you go in strong, they'll ask you why anyone should listen to you, as you're just an idiot on the internet. And that's fair, right? But he tries to build up credibility over time. Here are the 10 tips that I recommend. One, never ever try to convince anyone of anything on Telegram. The job is to create doubt and anxiety as much as possible and to give the Russian moderators as big of a headache as possible. Those moderators are the gateway for the Russian disinformation from the Kremlin to get to the West. Try to befriend them and then worry about how things are going. Like worry like, oh man, is that, are you sure? Isn't something, I heard that this is going to happen. Isn't that going to happen? I would advise sometimes allowing them to soothe you for a while and then come back with some other headache for them later on to seem genuine. <laughs> so last night I was watching The Office. It's a, the Office was a British TV show that uh, then took on a life of its own in America and had, the, I think the British show had like three seasons. The American had eight or nine seasons. And the bumbling office manager, Michael, he finds out that one of his workers is having an affair, but he was spreading a rumor about that without realizing like, like, cause he wanted to be involved and be part of the discussion. And he was spreading the rumor and then realized, uh Oh, I just made a big mistake because now this is going to really hurt Stanley, the employee that he was talking about. So he starts to spread other misinformation. He goes to everyone and says lies about everything so that it's creating all this disinformation about thing so it's not actually true. Michael regrets revealing that Stanley's having an affair so he spreads a bunch of other lies about everyone else to cover his tracks. Well that's essentially what disinformation is doing like what the Russians do with their disinformation. They spread a lot of disinformation and so yeah, that I mean, this is a, a legitimate strategy. Okay, number two, when you join a group, encourage the group to tell you as many lies as possible. Believe them all as they will be your weapons later on. Accepting their lies and or allowing them to change your mind will make you more likable. In addition, the lies that you're told are actually their weaknesses and can be used against them later, and you'll see for yourself. Now, I approach it from a very different perspective. I come in and I'm, I'm trying to listen to what they say and take at face value that they're, what they're saying is what they're wanting to project. Not that it's true, but that what the trolls say, what RT says, what you hear uh, Peskov say, whatever else, they, they're trying to project a message. So I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's what they want me to understand. And so why did they want me to understand it? So that's how I uh, uh, try to approach this. And so I, I can understand why he's saying what it is. Number three, Russia is the hero country and it's on a mission to save the whole world. And there is something deep in the Russian psyche like that. Number four, never use the word war. Oh, no, no, that's a bad, that's a no-no. You can go to jail for that in Russia, especially during your early days. You should only say the word war if it is clear that your avatar is stuck in the stupid West. Right. If if that's how your avatar works, you can say, well, I don't understand this war or, or how is that different from a special military operation or whatever in order to, to be brought along by others. If your avatar is from the West, then you have no idea that you're not allowed to say the word war. It's best to use the letters SMO for special military operation instead. Number five, any insults directed your way should be received as compliments and a sign of a job well done. Try to get as many as you can and treasure the best ones. <laughs> Number six, never ever say anything positive about the West in general and America in particular. If weapons are supplied from the West, they are fighting to the last Ukrainian and there is a holdup of some sort. It is evidence that the West has run out of steam and is ready to give up. America is never in the right about anything. Number seven, when it comes to talking about America, you should blame America for all the flaws that are present in Russia today. Now, that's a really interesting thought. When he says that, it strikes me as, yeah, there's something that that happens in Russian propaganda where they they just they they project like whatever is going on in Russia they project on America whatever they see their enemies doing they it's just it's a bizarre thing to watch but I think that it works out like that. I mean, this is my experience. Okay, uh, basically take all the flaws that Russia really has and just project them onto the U.S. You should say things like, the U.S. wants to control the world, the unipolar world, <laughs> right? Now, I've seen this on um, 1420, Daniel Orleans, uh, 1420, where he was asking, like, is, do you think it's unusual that people are falling out of hotel balconies? It's like, 
Yeah, people fall out of hotel balconies all around the world. In America, just as much as in Russia. Mm, not exactly. Not not these high-ranking political officials falling out of hotel balconies. Okay. At any rate, you should say things like the U.S. wants to control the world, the unipolar world. It already controls the Western Europe and the whole Anglo-Saxon world and has forced its culture on them. Putin has kept us pure and safe from the Americans. Number eight, unlike Western politicians, Putin is a symbol of traditional conservative values. So be very subtle if you bring up the fact that he dumped his wife for a 30-year-old gymnast and has a second family outside wedlock in a spiritually orthodox Russia. Okay, now that is true. Uh, this is the woman that he is currently dating, living with, whatever, however you define it. She was a gymnast. Uh, you can look her up on Wikipedia. Uh, and there's her with Putin. And yeah, she was a gymnast. And yeah. Uh, but but bringing that up is not like you're not trying to contradict. He's, he's trying to cozy up to them and then spread his disinformation. But what he gets in return is incredibly valuable information about how they think, which is, again, my interest. Number nine, Putin is responsible for everything good in Russia, and he it's he alone that has the power to control prices and keep them low. He deserves all the credit for price stability, past, present, and future, with a big focus on future. Let's see what happens to prices after the election. If you screw up somehow, number 10, on Telegram, you can just delete all your posts, change your profile, picture and username, start again on different channel with a different persona. There is no penalty for screwing up at all. When it's time for me to move on, I delete all my previous posts that they were made to create emotional reaction and not to form part of the historical record. Okay, so... Uh, and again, he does this on English speaking channels as well. So it's there's no real barrier for people that would want to go do that kind of thing. If you keep these tips in mind, you will have no problems ever on Telegram and you will have a lot of fun to boot. I hope to see you over on Telegram. If you <laughs> if you see, see any sort of conspiracy theory forming or you see anyone panicking about bad news, remember it's someone on our side. So please join in the panic or conspiracy as much as possible. Happy hunting. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, I showed you that because people were demanding in the comments, like, how does he do it? Tell us how he does it. And I said, well, they want to know how you do it. So if you can feed that to me, I'll feed that to them. And we also talked about, I'll provide updates as you provide me updates about like what people are, what you're saying and what they're saying. Um, the what he's saying is kind of funny. What they're saying is really important to understanding the Russian psyche or the mentality that these people have, whether they're Russians or whether they're uh, Americans or Westerners leaning toward that side. Um, and, and again, that's where we get some useful understanding and data because you have to understand how the other side actually thinks and not create a straw man of them. Okay, so that's all that I have for you right now. I hope that helps you. If you haven't seen the previous video, Trolling the Trolls, it, it, it will really help your understanding of what he's doing. And tell me what you thought about this and what he's doing and why he's doing it and that sort of thing. I'm curious. Put that in the comments below. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. Thank you for the coffees that are keeping me fueled. And Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.